I know what you're thinking. So, from time to time, I'll get a little bi-curious and make videos that explore the backbone of all anime. You know, the cultural aspect of anime and manga where we have stories that target the rich, lonely degenerates that keep this industry alive. Stories that will never be discussed outside the library. Except for this one. Or this one. Or this one. Huh. You know, have you ever noticed that the most horny animes usually come out during the winter season? Why is that? Do you think people goon to stay warm? Anyways, the point is, we're doing those manga videos. It's been two years since the last one. Also, I'm gonna call it a manga because the idea that someone spent thousands to promote their product in a video about someone watching their girl getting back shots is hilarious. So anyways, we're gonna take a look at quite possibly the dumbest story I've ever read. But it's important that I provide educational context and explain what you're about to get into. 337548 or Kanojo ni Kokuhaku Surumai ni Tomodachi ni Nakadashi Sarata or My Friend Came and Her Before I Could Confess. You know, that really rolls off the tongue there. Anyway, 337548 was created by H9 or Echiku, which is a cheeky pun. Not much is known about this person other than their prior works. And you really don't want to know what else this person has done. Just, just don't look it up. Let these tags be a warning or you'll end up like this. Also drawn by H9. Anyways, after the animal stuff, they eventually pivoted to NTR, or Netarare, which if you don't know, is a very popular lewd genre that no one can seem to agree on a definition. I thought it meant cuckolding, but apparently people disagree. Which I guess in cuckolding, the couple usually consents to it and the person getting cucked enjoys it. So in this case, how I would define NTR, usually we will have a male main character who likes or loves a girl, and usually that girl is snatched away by another man. That man can be the best friend, a bully, a stranger, or an uncle. It's a very humiliating genre, and usually it will elicit an angry emotion that is directed at the main character for being a little bitch. Some people might see themselves as the person cucking the main character. Usually those people aren't actually reading it. They just want to go in and out and have a 20 minute adventure. But if you're one of those that actually reads it for the story, you might empathize and feel like a loser, just like the MC. Which brings us to the question as to why is this genre even popular? It's depressing and all it does is makes you feel worse about your own life. How can you be aroused by that sort of thing? And I started to wonder how someone would, you know, end up here. And then I started thinking about drug addiction how people start doing drugs to escape the pain of reality. NTR is like that to some people. Maybe when you were younger you had a crush on this girl, but you were too scared to confess for fear of rejection, and so she started dating someone else. Or maybe you were in a relationship and you caught your partner cheating on you. Maybe you read NTR to relive the pain and sadness, but you also hope that the MC can find the strength to move on. And if you see that, you can live vicariously through the MC and maybe move on too. Some NTR mangas have that ending, or at least they, they try to. But not this manga though. This takes away all hope and it just exists to hate you. So we have three main characters, Takeo Moroi, our shy awkward virgin MC, Nakatani Himeno, aw oh man, huh? the girl who Takeo has a crush on, and of course, Kenji Himuro, who will become the biggest asshole in this manga. The story starts off fairly simple. These three are in the art club. Takeo has a crush on Nakatani and wants to confess to her, but he has no balls. Meanwhile, Kenji is overly confident and very touchy. At first, you think Kenji's trying to be a wingman. So he whips out his cock. I will not describe the situation that unfolds because of reasons, but basically Nakatani doesn't really know how to say no and just goes along with it since Kenji is very nonchalant about it. He also tries to frame it as an artistic exercise. Okay, well, you're not really reading this for the writing, let's be honest. Kenji does let Takeo have a turn, which is probably why Nakatani is more receptive to the idea, but only after he does what he does first, you know what I mean. Eventually, we get to the main event, and Kenji, although very aggressive, does allow Takeo to go first. And Nakatani is okay with that because she also likes Takeo. Unfortunately for him, he's a virgin, and he doesn't even last a second. Kenji then goes next, kind of forces Nakatani to confess, because she's horny and disappointed, I guess. So Kenji pops the cherry, and Takeo is forced to watch. He gets a little pissed off, and as a reader, you kind of want Takeo to just donkey punch the glasses off his head. 
But he doesn't do that. Because of course he doesn't. Anyway, at this point, Kenji just takes Nakatani and they continue their shenanigans outside of the school. And that's the end of chapter 1. So, right now, a fairly standard NTR storyline. Chapter 2 continues with more shenanigans at Kenji's house. At this point, Nakatani gets addicted to the feeling, and her mind is slowly breaking. Kenji knows she likes Takeo, and wants to be friends with benefits instead. Takeo arrives at Kenji's house, and wants to have a talk with Kenji, but ends up catching the two doing mouth stuff. And we get the classic cuck watches from behind the door scene. In chapter 3, Kenji tells Takeo that the two are together as friends with benefits, and they are now on a first name basis. Takeo, of course, is depressed and thinks it's over, which at this point, maybe you should just move on. But it's hard for a young man to get over their first love. At this point, Kenji has made Nakatani a slave. She does whatever he wants. Kenji, being Takeo's childhood friend, gives him the chance to redeem himself and to join in on the shenanigans. But Takeo is a little too awkward to flirt or even just ask. So Nakatani goes on the offensive and asks for him for consent. Once again, he blows it. And worst of all, he just leaves. Bye, have a great time. Like, come on, man. If you run out of ammo in your primary, switch to your secondary. God gave you 10 fingers for a reason, and you only need three to eat food. Anyways, Nakatani isn't satisfied. She goes back to Kenji, and at this point, he pretty much won. So now we're in chapter four, and this part is just really sad. So Kenji tries to help out Takeo, so he gives him a toy to practice with. This is essentially Takeo's training arc. And Kenji encourages this by sending a private video of Nakatani. Takeo does some POV shadow boxing, and you know what they say, third time's a charm. He was finally able to do it. He was finally able to last more than a second. Unfortunately for him, he's not actually there. And Kenji shows his stupid smug face. And we get a title drop. Don't you just want to punch this guy's face? The suffering isn't over though, it keeps going in chapter 5. At this point, Takeo is a broken man, and Nakatani no longer has any love for him. Kenji does offer Takeo a chance to redeem himself after he breaks into another hole first. So the three meet up, and they human centipede it. Takeo treats Nakatani's butthole like that one Junji Ito manga, and the three end up just having a physical relationship whenever they want. Sometimes Takeo got some alone time with Nakatani, but that all ended with one text. So, how else can the suffering continue? Well, seeing as Nakatani is now pregnant with Kenji's child, Kenji decides to take responsibility and meets with Nakatani's parents, proclaiming to them that he is the boyfriend. Takeo has no choice but to say he's the friend with benefits. And Nakatani's dad beats the crap out of them. Why? <laughs> so, beat the crap out of the other guy too while you're at it. He's the one that got her pregnant. We go through Takeo's entire history with Nakatani, and he was a good kid. If only he took the chance to confess. Maybe in a different genre, they would have a nice wholesome vanilla romance. But we're in the NTR genre, so my man has to suffer. And suffer he does. Time passes, and Nakatani gives birth. And Takeo ends up being the father to Kenji's child. He does all the hard parenting stuff. Meanwhile, Kenji and Nakatani just make more babies. And that's the end of Volume 1. Yes, you heard me, volume one. Most mangakas would usually end their stories there and move on, because at this point, we've exhausted all the scenarios that a typical NTR manga would have. What else can you do? How can H9 continue to milk this awful storyline? A storyline that started three years ago. How else can you make Takeo suffer? Well, what if you got Takeo's mom involved? So chapter 7 starts with Muroi Hitomi and Ada Ada doing naughty things to a Shota Kenji, turning him into a simp for this MILF. And guess what? There's actually a plot twist. It turns out that the reason Kenji started making Takeo's life miserable and the reason the story even exists in the first place is that Takeo's own mother hates him and wants him to suffer. Huh? Why? Well, in chapter eight, we find out that Takeo is not Hitomi's child, but is actually a bastard. Hitomi cannot give birth as she is infertile, so her husband got his mistress pregnant instead. So instead of getting angry at the husband, she takes it out on a child. And Kenji being a simp, does whatever he can to make Takeo miserable so that he can be rewarded by Hitomi. 
and this relationship lasts for years. We eventually get back to chapter one, but this time it's from Kenji's POV. Why? I don't know. H9 really subverted the NTR genre with this one. Turns out Kenji was filming Takeo's suffering throughout their first encounter so that he could send it to Hitomi. At this point, I'm not even angry. I'm just flabbergasted as to why this even exists. Anyway, we go through the same scenarios again, and we don't really learn anything new. We already know that Kenji was a scumbag. So in chapter 9, Hitomi gets a little jealous that Kenji has a new cute young girl, and it looks like the husband is suspicious. That won't go anywhere though. But we do know that Hitomi does not like how controlling he is. We can skip chapters 10 and 11 since nothing really happens, but on chapter 12, we get introduced to a new girl. Yes, there's a new girl named Maya. This is Takeo's sister, uh, stepsister to be exact. Oh no, what are they gonna do to this poor woman? So unfortunately, the translator, which I don't blame them, left. And so the rest of the chapters are untranslated. So I'll try my best to interpret it, but my interpretations kind of go wild if you know me. So if you want to clarify, you're more than welcome to leave a comment to correct me. Honestly, I hope it's not what I think. So it turns out that Maya was there during Takeo's training arc, and she likes him, so they get into some shenanigans. Now you might be wondering, isn't Hitomi infertile? Where the hell did Maya come from? Well, there are a few options. Number one, Takeo's dad probably had another child with another mistress. This is the logical answer. Or two, the stepmother actually got pregnant from a show to Kenji, and this is Kenji's daughter, because they kind of look the same, which makes no sense, but I would not be surprised at this point. I do hope it's option one though, because option two is so stupid that I could see why the translator would quit. The point is, Maya likes Takeo way too much, and because of that, Kenji has to come in and ruin it. And of course, Maya doesn't report it to the police and put this nearsighted asshole behind bars. In fact, she just goes along with it, and now she's part of his NTR harem. In chapter 13, we fast forward to the future with Takeo marrying Nakatani. I hope he likes emotional love because he ain't getting physical with her, that's for sure. What makes it worse for Takeo is that a lot of the kids that Nakatani gives birth to, they kind of look like him. So he does a DNA test, but it turns out that none of them are his kids and this causes him to break down. So in chapter 14, he seeks out his stepsister and realizes that he loves her and wants to have a child with her. And she's pretty receptive to that idea because she also loves him because they grew up together as when she was a kid, I, you know, whatever, man, whatever, whatever works for you. So finally, from all the training he got, he manages to base to her turkey. What the? For once, he actually succeeds. But then Kenji shows up, and since he essentially broke Maya a long time ago, he forces Takeo's juices out of Maya, and then he bases her turkey instead and makes Takeo watch. Kenji has cooked Takeo twice. This man can't have anything. And now we have officially broken poor Takeo's mind. He is now a slave to the NTR, Kenji's NTR, who gets off making him suffer now. By the way, there's still one more chapter. <laughs> oh God. In chapter 15, Takeo's dad tries to help him, but to no avail as he's pretty much switched to an NTR personality and the Takeo that we knew is now trapped inside his own mind, probably cucking himself as his NTR personality pilots his own body. Meanwhile, Hitomi finally gets pregnant after a gazillion generational cream pies from Kenji over the years. Naturally, Takeo's dad is pissed which is pretty hypocritical of him. And it turns out Hitomi's dad is pretty powerful. And if she reveals to Kale's dad's infidelity, it would ruin his life. So Hitomi blackmails him to keep the child. And that's not all. Kenji decides to let Takeo and his dad watch him get it on with all the girls who are all pregnant. He even lets Takeo join like the good little dog that he is now. The dad is reluctant, but you know, he can't resist young impregnated pussy, I guess. And now they are all a happy family. It's finally over. I really hope it is. This manga should have ended over eight chapters ago. I am so sorry that you got subjected to this stupid, stupid story. The only thing this manga has going for it is that the art is nice to look at. But even then, was it really worth it? Was it really worth having the mom hate the son because it wasn't hers? 
Was it really worth having a stepsister fall in love with her own brother only to have that taken away? Was it really worth watching this poor guy lose his damn mind and essentially lobotomize himself all because he couldn't confess to his crush before his friend came in her? No, it wasn't worth it. And I spent hours creating this video. This was not worth it. I don't care if this somehow gets a bajillion views or makes me tons of money. When I eventually die, this experience will be my biggest regret. I hope H9 is happy because not only did he write the worst NTR ever, he also cucked me! I could have spent all this time with friends or loved ones instead of doing this shit! I don't even want to beg for subs, J just go live your life! Stop reading this genre and go do something productive! It's not too late, you know? You could still make it out there! I know you can do it! There's still hope for you! You're not a loser like Takeo! Don't live vicariously through him! Get yourself out there and go confess to your crush before it's too late! But most importantly, I really hope you have a nice day! Anyways, that was good acting, right? <laughs> yes, there were times I'm sure you knew When she got off More than I could chew But through it all When you went all out She ate it up And spit it out She faced it all While I stood tall 